All right, let's see what we got up next. Oh boy, this is a good one. And you know what? I'm going to go first on this one. So we got Alexander Romanov going up against Roke. Is, is it Roque Martinez? Anybody I think know how, so. how his name's pronounced? I think it's Roque. Yeah. Okay. So just earlier today, I was watching the tape on this Roque Martinez. I tell you what, man, uh, I think this is a tougher matchup than what uh, Romanov was dealing with in his first fight, honestly. Uh, you know, I watched the Crow Cop fight. Roque was holding his own, was doing pretty well in that fight. I was actually quite impressed. You know, you look at this guy at weigh-ins earlier today. You're like, you're looking at the physique. You're like, oh man, who's this sloppy, sloppy looking heavyweight? This guy's no joke, man. This could end up being a, a far more dangerous matchup. I want to say they opened up Romanov at like a minus 400. That's far too wide. I think Roque could absolutely win this fight on the feet. Uh, actually had some really good takedown defense from what I could tell too. Now, is it going to matter? Is Romanov going to go in there and Romanov? Yeah, probably. And I'm going to end up taking Romanov, but, uh, I do think there's some danger here. Romanov, big Russian wants to get in there, hit that takedown and just smash you from top position. I got Romanov in this one. Uh, but man, I'm telling you what, if, if someone were to, uh, will, willing to take that, take that shot on his opponent, i I couldn't. I couldn't argue with it, man. I, I could really see him winning this fight. I mean, these are heavyweights. One guy lands that big shot. He's going to win the fight. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, Roque, uh, be on the lookout, but I'm going to end up going Romanov. Guru, what do you think about this one, man? Yeah, this is a fun fight. I mean, when you look at Roque Martinez, to me, it's like he has uh, okay boxing, uh, decent takedown defense, and he'll hit some takedowns himself, but really not a super skilled guy. It's just uh, he is super durable, has a great chin, and – you know, he can keep coming forward. He has decent cardio for a, for a heavyweight kind of, he manages his, his cardio well, where like he doesn't throw a lot of shots unless he really needs to. But looking at his fights, I mean, he did fight a uh, crow cop and he fought another guy, uh, Jake Hewn, who's like a known guy, but not super good. And he lost a split decision there where I kind of thought he won, but it, it was a close fight. And, uh, but if you look at his recent fights, like uh, his like uh, fights in deep and rising, like, it, they're like weird fights, man. It's like he's fighting a guy that's like looks like he's on like every steroid ever. It's like his nickname is Shrek, and he looks horrible. Yeah. He's throwing like arm punches, and then he fought this other like old uh, Asian guy that had like a, a knee brace and something like a bunch of stuff like on his arm, where like it looked like he was like had a lot of injuries. I don't know. So he had some weird fights where I don't really know about his competition level. And I, I do think he has decent takedown defense, but when I've seen him on his back, he doesn't look that good. I mean, he lets guys get to dominant positions and kind of turtles up a little bit. And you don't want to do that against a big guy like Robinoff. And he's really small for the division. So I think that's kind of what helps his takedown defense a little bit. But in the clinch, I mean, I feel like Romanoff is going to be way stronger, be able to take him down and, on top, I just think he's going to be able to finish him. So I'm going to go with Romanoff here. And the line, I mean, I, I don't know if I could bet on it because it is a weird fight. It's a heavyweight fight, and it's um, almost minus 400. So I'd probably just stay away from the fight, but I kind of feel like Romanoff will get a first on finish. There you go. Good stuff from the guru. Cody Safdick, what do you think? Yeah, so obviously I really like Romanov going against Delima, but now things just changed completely, whereas you were looking to bet Romanov at an even money price tag, and now you're looking at bet Romanov at nearly a 4-1 to price tag, so it definitely changes up things. And now these are heavyweights making their debut, both of them very large men. Obviously Romanov, a former amateur wrestling champion, but also a former sumo wrestler, comes in at 260 pounds. He's a very large man. Uh, flip side to that, you have Roke Martinez when he was fighting in Japan. I mean, they were open weight contests, but I mean, he even tips the scale at 258. Like They're both big individuals. Heavyweight debuts, uh, UFC debuts, sorry, uh, pack a lot of power. Do you want the guy at 4-1? to one? I don't know. But as far as breaking down the matchup itself goes, yeah, I think it's Romanov all day. I like Romanov going into the Lima fight because I just thought, you know, at the wrestling credentials, this guy's cardio looks like it checks out. He's fought an okay level of competition, but I just think he'll be able to get the Lima down and beat the Lima. The Lima will get tired, and Romanov will have his way. Perfect. I like Romanov. The Roke Martinez fight does change something. And just going to a guru said, he manages his cardio a lot better, right? So Delima doesn't. delima has got one round of gas. Whereas yeah. Roque Martinez, he kind of got to get this guy out of there or else, yeah, he could be there in the second round. He could be there in the third round. And then who knows what Romanov is going to look like. We've seen Romanov extend past the first round one single time, and he was just having his way against a guy that wasn't quite his size. 
So against Roque Martinez is his size, has decent cardio. Who knows if he's able to catch him maybe rounds two, maybe rounds three. There's all those that are presented. But the thing with Roque Martinez, ever since his entire career, really, he's been a freak show fight, right? They brought him in Japan to just mostly do freak shows. His entire record is built out of this. Uh, the JD Psy fight way back when. J JD Psy, incredible kickboxer, former K1 champion. Jerome LeBanner, pfft. I mean, the cyborg Jerome LeBanner, former French kickboxing champion. Miracle Krokop, the Croatian kickboxing champion. They just gave him a lot of kickboxers, and it was fun because Roke would try to get them down. They would try to keep the fight standing, beat him up. They are fun fights, and that was it. After he loses to Jay Kuhn, that one's key because Jay Kuhn's is a non-contender. Jay Kuhn was okay at 205 pounds, coming up to heavyweight. I mean, he just he's out of place. He currently has a record of 13 wins, 10 losses, and uh, he extends Roque Martinez out. It's a split decision win for, for Jake Hune, but by no means is it a good performance by Roque Martinez. I think that shows you the ceiling of where this guy's at. Is he, is he UFC material? I surely don't think so. So now he wins his last two fights after that. But again, he just goes back to freak show matchup bookings, right? You got Sengo Mitsuguchi. Sengo Mitsuguchi is 14 and 17. Again, he's another journeyman opponent, uh, all beaten up, bodies completely broken to bits. And then after that, Hideki Sain, right? Sakain, known as Shrek, 46 years old. And yeah, he's a former ADCC Japan champion. And yeah, he's on every steroid in the book and looks gigantic. But come on, he's 46 years old and cannot move. His 1FC career was absolutely laughable. He moves like a stiff board. Uh, it's just another freak show fight, and Roque Martinez goes out and gets the win. Now he's making his UFC debut on short notice against not an old broken-down kickboxing champion or a guy that's not in the prime of his career, against a Moldovan heavyweight who could also be on every gas in the book, I don't know, but seems like he's in good shape and seems like he's here to smash, smash, smash. 4-1 to one is not a good price tag. Two guys, it's a it's a, a matchup that just got put on short notice. You know, if Romanov, you know, if he's not in great shape like if he, if he gets extended past the first round maybe martinez may, it's a lot of dicey questions we're going back to prior breakdowns dicey questions is not what you want when you have a four to one favorite so yeah yeah i got romanov i got romanov to take this guy out but well i don't even know if he takes him out maybe it goes to decision romanov doesn't look like he's much of a decision fighter but again you don't know because of levels of competition but uh yeah romanov four to one don't like it but i got romanov absolutely dfs by the numbers what can you tell us about this that hasn't been said already a lot has been said already. You guys broke it down pretty good. Um, I do like uh, Romanov quite a bit in this matchup. You know, watching tape on Martinez, I was actually impressed. I thought he was a decent striker, had good power, very good durability. But I don't know. Romanov, I feel like he's just going to take him down. I mean, from what I saw, Martinez's takedown defense looked good, but he didn't fight anybody, you know, like Romanov that's going to try to go out there and pick him up and slam him. And at the weigh-ins, I was really surprised at how big Romanov looked to Martinez like he was a lot bigger it looked like so um, I'm gonna go Romanov here probably inside the distance I think if he gets this down to the mat it's probably going to be over shortly after so um, I do want to take a look at the under the lines aren't out for it I don't know they're taking their time on the lines for some reason um, but I do want to look at that under because I do feel like both uh, guys have potential to finish it early um, if Romanov is able to not if, is not able to take down Martinez Martinez could be live for a knockout Romanov is still unproven Minus 365 is absolutely insane. One, it's a heavyweight fight. Two, Romanov has not fought the best competition. UFC newcomer, both guys are um, very, very sketchy. But that under 1.5, if it's plus money, I might take a look on that. Uh, Romanov has finished like nine out of his 11 fights in the first round. So that's probably going to be a look for me there. I wouldn't even put minus 365 into a parlay. I'm just not, it's not something I really want to mess around with. Two heavyweights going at it. Both have you know extreme power. But my lean is Romanov, but the line uh, just looks off to me. Absolutely, man. A lot of X factors. Both guys making their UFC debuts. Both guys heavyweights. Both guys bigger, heavy heavyweights. I mean, we're talking over 500 combined pounds in the octagon. I just hope they got the cage reinforced for this one. You know what I'm saying? If not, Romanov might be blowing this guy right out that cage door on a takedown. All right. So I think we got that one covered. That takes us up to Roosevelt Roberts versus Kevin Kroom. DFS by the numbers. I think you're up to the plate on this one. Yeah, this is a fight I haven't looked into all that much. Uh, lots of craziness happened today, so I don't have. All, I didn't do all that much tape study on Krim. For what I saw, he's, he's very, very scrappy. He's kind of wild. He gives up some bad positions on the mat. Um, I don't know. I'm going to go with Roberts, but I need to do a lot more tape, so I'm hoping you guys can tell me a little bit more about it. But from what I saw, he looks like a crazy man. I think this is going to be a fun fight, but a guy as technical as Roberts and as good on the ground, I don't think it's going to slide against Krim. Um, I don't know. I think Roberts is probably going to be a big favor, but like I said, I have a lot more looking in to do. So I uh, let me know what you guys think. Well, guru, what do you think about this one? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, Kevin Kroon, he's a veteran. He's uh, fought a lot of guys, and he's done He's done well. He's beaten some guys, but most of the time when he's fought UFC-level guys, he gets finished or he loses. So that's kind of the type of fighter that he is. But I believe he was supposed to fight another guy on short notice recently, right? Or it was rumored that I think Alex Caceres. So the UFC is uh, looking at him, so maybe he has been training, you know, staying in shape and everything like that. But from what I see, he's just a guy that – very wild on the feet. I mean, he could knock you out, but doesn't really have great striking and just wants to use the striking and close the distance to get you to the ground. But on the ground, I mean, he's, he's aggressive, but kind of sloppy leaves his neck out there. And I actually feel like Roberts is going to get, uh, you know, that signature guillotine that he has and finish the fight that way, most likely. But, you know, looking at Roberts, you know, he's obviously coming off that loss to Jim Miller and been a little bit disappointing in the UFC. I mean, I know Dana White said he was like, one of his favorite prospects, but he hasn't really blossomed to be like where he's like the higher level yet, but I still think he has potential and he has uh, you know, long, he's long. He has good straight punch. He's going to be way better on the feed. I feel like on the ground, he's going to be better too. And I just feel like he's going to catch that guillotine. So I'm going to go with Roberts here. Right on Cody Saftik. What do you think, man? I think it's super cool that Kevin Kroom's getting a shot in the UFC, considering he's just, the guy's been around for a long time. He's been fighting professionally for 11 years. Uh, he, he, this is a guy that fought Justin Gaethje once upon a time. Yeah. He's also fought five UFC veterans and defeated just one of them. Uh, he's mostly always a bride, never a bride, or always a bridesmaid, never a bride. Kind of that guy that gets a good fight against a UFC veteran. Maybe this is his step to jump up and then just doesn't quite get there. But I mean, he's fought a ton. He's a very exciting fighter. And him jumping in to fight Bruce Leroy wasn't like the UFC had pre-booked this fight months in advance or anything like that he was jumping in to fight bruce leroy on like two days notice they needed somebody he just fit the description he came in the fight didn't materialize they appreciated him stepping up to the plate and so they gave him this other opportunity and say uh, here you go here's another fight on two days notice against roosevelt roberts whereas he's very exciting and he, he's gritty and he's gonna make it a fight i just think roosevelt roberts has got the, the the technical superiority over him i mean he's a better grappler he's a better wrestler as far as us thinking maybe he had some cardio issues coming off of you know vince michelle fight or jim miller fight vince michelle is gigantic very big for the weight class very strong, very draining type fighter. It's understandable to lose a clinch war to a guy like that. Jim Miller, high level black belt. Guy did wrestle collegiately way back in the day, prehistoric era, uh, but a good grappler all the same. And, you know, he gets the work. If you don't have those kind of X factor advantages over Roosevelt Roberts, he's just going to have his way. As far as the striking goes, he lacks punching power, but I mean, he's a long rangey guy, six foot two, knows how to use that to his, uh, to his, his benefit. With Kevin Kroon, he wasn't didn't have a great uh, training camp going into the Bruce Leroy fight. Then the fight gets canceled. Then all of a sudden, you're rebooked on two days' notice. So he's a guy that we can really say with confidence probably doesn't have a great, great training camp coming into this fight. But he's here to scrap. This is his opportunity. This is his life's work. He's, what, 17 and 10? 27 pro fights. Lost 10 of them. And I am here on the biggest stage. I'm here to fight. I'm going to give it a go. But, I mean, I don't know how you can back him just on the basis of, you know, that's a good story, finally made the UFC. I mean, he's been in spots like this before, and unfortunately, uh, he's a little bit wild. He's a little bit reckless, and the better fighter usually capitalizes on that. I expect Roosevelt Roberts to do that, so I got Roosevelt Roberts. Yeah, I'm with you guys, man. I got Roosevelt Roberts in this one. I just feel like, you know, maybe there's a chance that he'll be at a slight disadvantage certain areas of the grappling game. But other than that, man, I just see Roosevelt Roberts being the all-around bigger, better fighter. Um you know, it is a little bit concerning. Roosevelt Roberts did get snatched up in that arm bar against Jim Miller, but I mean, let's let, let's think about the credentials here. Jim Miller, far better than Kroom when it comes to the grappling game. Uh, you do look at Kroom's record, though. I mean, the guy's got a lot of submissions. So, it, I mean, don't get me wrong. Could he play spoiler here? I think he might. You know, if he finds that position, he could lock something in. But, man, Roosevelt Roberts, a guy who, honestly, at times I have questioned his fight IQ. Um I still feel confident enough in him. I just think Roosevelt Roberts, you know, is going to win this fight. Roosevelt Roberts was the guy who's actually getting ready to fight. I mean, I, I'm betting Crooms probably been ready. He was ready to fight last week. Has he had a real training camp that I'm not sure. Maybe it's been a week. Maybe it's been two weeks. Uh, maybe they've had him more on standby and he has been ready. I'm not really sure. But what I know is, is win, lose or draw Roosevelt Roberts is the better fighter here. I mean, Crooms going to split decisions with guys with losing records, guys that are just not UFC caliber guys and uh, it's not that long ago it's two three fights ago you know what i'm saying roosevelt roberts i believe is ufc caliber and a guy that you know if he can really start putting the pieces together should start making an impact he just needs to get over some of these bad losses and some of this bad fight iq and he could be back on 
Dana's good list, you know what I'm saying, of up-and-coming prospects. So I got Roosevelt Roberts in this one. Feel pretty good about it. I think it would have to be a, a real – it would be more of a failure on Roosevelt Roberts' part, a huge error for him to lose this fight than it would Kroom coming out and looking very impressive. So uh, I got Roosevelt Roberts in this one. Does anybody want to throw anything on that? Uh, I just want – they don't have any line for that, right, out yet? I don't know. We could look. Let me give it a look here really quick. Uh, no, I don't see it anywhere. I'm looking on best fight odds right now. I don't, I don't see, they still have uh Frivola Roberts up. So you guys think that'll be like a minus 400, another one. I do. I do too. Yeah. 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 I think so too. 